Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess from Handmade by Jess. Today we're going to do a torch wood round for Halloween. If you've watched my previous video, you'll know that this was actually a failed project that I took back to the original state so that we could redo it for Halloween. I'm just taking my torch, going slowly across the surface of the wood to bring out the wood grain and burn it. If you've never done this before, you want to go very slowly. This is sped up pretty quick um, for video purpose, so you, you don't have to watch it in real time. But uh, just go slowly. Make sure you keep your fingers out of the way. You don't want to burn your fingers. It gets very hot whenever you're doing it. You can see the smoke coming off of the wood there. Uh, so just be very careful. And you want to make sure you get your edges really well. Go all the way around so that it's cohesive. All the way around the whole project. Then I'm going to take Varathane Gel Stain in the color Dark Walnut. And I'm going to stain the entire project. I actually got this stain at the Dollar Tree. I was shocked when I seen it there in the auto section. I had to pick up a can of it and try it. I've never tried gel stain before this. I, I think it's really pretty. Uh, gel stain is not my favorite type of stain. Uh, you got to watch it. It will get blotchy. So whenever you're applying it, you want to make sure after you apply it, you take a clean cloth and, you know, rub all over your project just to rub it in and take off any excess that may be sitting there so that you don't have any splotches anywhere on the project at all. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to apply the gel stain and then take my clean cloth and rub it in and take off any excess that may be in any area on the project. And then we'll bring it in and I got this bat from the Dollar Tree and this really pretty Delilah flower clip from the Dollar Tree. First thing I'm going to do is take my painter's tape and mark off, you know, the section where I'm going to paint. I'm just trying to find my placement there. I'm going to cut out a stencil on my Cricut to put on it also. Just measuring and make sure everything's straight and pushing down that tape really tight so that we don't have any bleedage. I'm going to use Apple Barrel's Black Matte Paint as the base color. I'm just going to paint that on there. And then I'm going to take some gold metallic paint to kind of streak across it also. Um, there it is. It's Deco Art Metallics Rich Espresso. I'm just going to streak that across there. You know, while the black is wet still, we're not, we're not looking for perfection um, because what we're going to do here is the crackle effect. And I kind of wanted the black and the gold to kind of like peek through the cracks in different areas um, because we're going to be doing a lighter color over top. So the darker colors will be peeking through the cracks. I'm going to take Snow White by Apple Barrel and a little bit of this white paint from Dollar General and a little bit of burnt umber. I'm trying to create like an antique white color. I didn't really want like a stark white on there. So I'm going with this, this color here. I mix that up first. Then I'm just going to take some plain old school glue and we're going to put a nice thick layer of that across where we've painted our other colors. You want a nice thick layer and you want the glue to be a little tacky before you do the next portion. I got my roller brush. I'm going to make sure it's saturated really well. And we're just going to very lightly go over the glue. Now it will 
you got to trust the process <laughs> because it will look like it's pulling the glue back up and getting on your brush and everything. And it is, but it won't look that way when it's dry. So once you make sure your paint has covered the whole area, don't apply any pressure. Just let the roller go across it so that it applies the paint across the glue. I'm going to take my heat gun and if you apply heat to it, the glue will actually crackle the paint that's on the top. It's, it's really cool. I love doing this to projects. I think it's awesome. And I think it's perfect for Halloween too. Look at that. That's gorgeous. So once we've got that done and it's dry completely, we're going to take some matte Mod Podge and we're going to coat it because I did not want my stencil to pull up any of that paint. So we're going to just coat it here so that it's, you know, secure and we don't have to worry about the paint peeling up whenever we apply the sticker stencil to it. I'm going to peel off the painter's tape to reveal the area where we're going to apply the stencil. I'm using Cricut stencil vinyl for this. Normally I do not recommend this uh, type of stencil vinyl. I've had issues with it not being adhesive enough. It doesn't stick very well, but that was perfect for this project because I wasn't wanting anything really sticky anyway because I, you know, didn't want to pull up any of that paint that we had put on there previously. So we're just going to apply the stencil and I'm going to use Waverly's ink with some black paint and the roller brush. We're going to roll that paint right on there and I'm going to remove the stencil while the paint is still wet. I've had issues where I've let the stencil dry well I let the paint dry while the stencil was on there and I've actually had it peel my paint off so I like to remove my stencil while my paint is wet and I'll remove all the little pieces in between and just weed out you know in between the letters and everything and there it is home sweet haunted home it says now we're gonna do our top coat we're gonna seal it up with some minwax water-based poly acrylic and I'm going to use my little Mod Podge brush there. I got that at Joann Fabrics. That thing is awesome for coating. Um, and if you remake this project, please don't do what I did. Please wait until your stencil <laughs> is completely dry. I thought it was dry enough and I'd be good to go, but you, you can kind of see there where when I applied the top coat, it kind of smeared my paint just a little bit. It kind of made it hazy, which I was okay with uh, for this project because it's for Halloween. It kind of looks, you know, spooky. So I kind of let that go. I didn't try to, you know, fix it in any way. I didn't think that was too bad for Halloween. So we're going to coat the back just like we did the front. Nice thick layer of it on there. Seal everything up. And then we'll be putting a hanger on the back before we do anything else to the front. I'm going to use this wired jute twine from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to make a couple knots at the ends. I'm going to double it up and twist it so it has a stronger hold. And I'll just be using my staple gun there to staple the hanger on. That'll be sufficient enough. Normally I would suggest using D hooks on the back of a wood round of this size, but I didn't have any on hand, so this will work just fine. If you do the knots and staple above the knots, you will have no issues at all with anything falling off or, you know, slipping on you there. So now we've got that done. We're going to come back around to the front. I'm going to cut the hanger off of the bat. And we're just going to place a staple in his mouth so it can't be seen. And we're going to reinforce his body with some hot glue. 
and that'll be good enough to hold him on there. He's not going to go anywhere like that. And then I'm going to take the clip off of the flower and actually cut off the little stem that they have on the back. I don't know if these are like dead branches or what. I got them at the Dollar Tree. They actually have three different colors. They got black, purple, and gold or orange, I think. Um, but I got a black set. And I'm just going to put them so they're coming out like the top of the flower there. I thought that was really cute. So I'm just, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to find the placement for those. I'm going to staple those on there also. Just a couple staples, you know, going across to hold them in place. We'll do those just fine. You don't need any hot glue there at all. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom layer of the petals on the flower and I'm just going to staple a couple of those on there so that the flower doesn't move around on us. And you don't need any hot glue for that either. It'll hold just fine like that. And then we're done. That's it. That's all there is to it. I think it turned out awesome. I love that crackle paint effect. I love the color of that flower. That dark stain on the porched wood. It looks awesome. This is actually one of my favorite projects I've done for Halloween in a long time. I love it. It turned out really nice. Even with the haziness around the, the wording on the stencil, I think it looks awesome. But as always, I would appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.